Hi, welcome to another video on the channel. Great to see you. In this video today, I'm going to talk about a subject that I'm often asked about, and it's all about how you log support tickets with Microsoft 365 should you encounter any sort of problem with any of their software or technology. So not obvious to everyone. So I'm going to walk through what the options are on the Microsoft 365 admin portal. We'll get to that in a minute. But before we do, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you've not already subscribed, please do me the favor, massive favor, please to hit that subscribe button down below. It helps me so much to grow the channel. Hit the notifications bell while you're there if you would. Equally, if you wouldn't mind checking out the join button and see the levels of membership that are available on the channel. All members only videos are now available to anyone who joins at a very low price. Lots of different levels available, go check them out. Right to the video, all about support within Microsoft 365, let's check it out. So to contact Microsoft for support, you need to be in your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, admin.microsoft.com. The minimum role available to do this is the Service Support Admin. You're going to need this role. I'm in this Global Admin here. That, of course, can do it as well as can any number of other roles. Billing Administrator, I think, can view those service requests as can Help Desk Admin, Service Support Admin specifically for this purpose though. And you need to go to the support dropdown on the left-hand side panel here. And you can see a few options here. The first one is help and support, which we will go into to log the ticket. Once we've done that, we should be able to see that service request created and go back and see the status of it. Customer lockbox requests are something that are available to E5 customers on M365, where Microsoft have to explicitly request permission to access your systems while they are providing support. And there is a trail of this, an audit trail for compliance purposes. And we also have Microsoft Surface support in here now, which since the last time I checked this is uh, a new feature, not one I'm familiar with. But let's go through the process and go to help and support and see what it looks like. And you get a flyout panel here on the right to type the problem that you have. Tell us the problem so they can get you to the correct support. Microsoft. Defender Endpoint. Ah, there we go. Onboarding issue in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. That is the one that I think matches what I'm having specifically. First of all, it loads some self-help solutions for you. You can, if you want to, skip this. If you feel that you've already done the troubleshooting that Microsoft might take you through as a first point of... Uh, solutionizing this, then you can just skip to the contact support bit. But if you feel it's worth going through this bit, you can go through um, providing some information to guide you to resources that may be able to help. So in my case, I'm using Mac OS, and I want to troubleshoot Defender for Endpoint Onboarding Issues. So what I can do is I can click onto that, and it can take me right into the guides that I've already been through. If you've watched the video that I uh, shared this problem with of, of, of getting uh, the Mac fully onboarded with the configuration settings, then you know I've already been through this. So one of the uh, other things that it did suggest is running the, and here it is again, the XMDE client analyzer and provide the logs generated. And it gives you instructions here on this link on how to do that. Now, interestingly enough, I did this. I did this before filming this video. It went through the process. I ran it through the terminal, which is Mac's version of the PowerShell command line, for those of you who may not know. And nothing seemed to happen. No output seemed to come from it. So I've either not done it correctly or, or something else has gone wrong. I was not aware of any issues, though. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight past this point, And in my case, it's not really worth proceeding with any of those initial steps. I want to get talking to someone who can look at my issue. Uh, for critical service requests, you can do phone. I never, ever do that because my preference is to connect via email, and that is my preferred settings for response as well. You can set your preferred settings here. 
You can set your time zone, which is important. Otherwise, they will it'll get through to the, the wrong support center around the world if you don't have this correct and you'll get called all hours of the night, unless that's what you want, if it is that urgent. I've got my language correct there. So I'm going to go email. I am going to uh, put my issue in detail into here, onboarding issue with Defender for Endpoint. I cannot get configuration settings to deploy to Mac OS. I'm going to put my contact number in here. Search for my country code. Uh, there I am, United Kingdom. And put my number in. And I am going to Microsoft work directly with contacts listed to resolve this service request. Consent to the recording of all calls necessary to resolve this. So it gives you information about what that's going to involve there. So you can choose yes or no. I'm always happy to, to help there with that sort of thing. You can put any relevant attachments into here as well. So I've taken some screenshots of the problems that I've had with, with this particular issue. So I want to include those uh, for Microsoft to take a look at. And I've, I've put them onto my desktop. So I will just... Um, and oh, wonderful, it's going to make me do them one at a time, which is just dandy, but that's fine. I can do that. I can skip all this when I edit the video. I can choose accessibility settings if I have that requirement. So if I can put, I have accessibility related needs. In my case, I don't. So I am going to go ahead and put contact me. Now I'm in a tenant here that I don't really use bar um, demo purposes, but um, I'm, I'll leave that there and I'll just keep an eye on the inbox uh, more regularly. I'm going to hope that they will not call me. Uh, my preference is for email contact, but let us see what happens. So I've clicked on contact me now, and here is my service request. So it's showing me what I've logged. Severity is C, so they've they've deemed that themselves. That's not, not something I can set. Service request is opened. I can track this to see when an agent is assigned and so on and so forth. And I can view the case communications here. So I can actually edit this if I want to. So if I do that, what does that do? I can I can go back and put notes on and and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna leave that for now. And let's just go into view service requests. And, and there we go. We can see that now in our service request history. And I can get to it from there. Other people who have rights to this area, the support area within Microsoft 365 can see that. Um, and again, if we go into it, we can, we can see these details. Um, and we can get ready for Microsoft to reply to us. What you will find, and admittedly, it's been a while since I've had to do this, but Microsoft will usually, they'll, despite whatever contact preference you put in, they'll usually try to ring you first, which I find incredibly annoying, even though you say you prefer to communicate by email. But they'll try to contact you by phone uh, and then have a talk. And they'll quite often, even if you're a confident administrator, you consider yourself quite uh, expert in this subject, they'll take you through, through some very basic stuff to begin with. And they will quite often, even if you tell them that, they will not listen to the fact that you know what you're talking about. They, they, they will quite often be reading from a script. So you have to be patient with them. And uh, like anything else, you get good ones, you get not so good ones sometimes. So uh, they will possibly ask you to go through things you've already tried. They will possibly ask for remote control to access your system and do a screen share with you as well. So be prepared for that. So um, so what else can we do? We can look at customer lockbox requests here. Let's have a look and see what, uh, what, 
what this is all about. As I don't have this set up, that's not relevant to my situation. I am keen to see what Microsoft Surface support is all about, though, because I've not seen this before. So uh, the Surface support portal offers an easy way to look up warranty and protection plans associated with your MS hardware and create single or bulk service requests. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can register for that. So that's, that's handy to know if you're on a Surface device and you need support for that. So... Um, what I'll do here is I'll, I will keep this open now. I'll keep an eye on the email that is tied to this account also, and I'll wait for Microsoft to get back to me, and hopefully it will be a nice, pleasant experience that will be able to help me with my issue, uh, and I will certainly update you when that is the case. And there you go. Pretty straightforward to do as long as you've got the right roles assigned to the right people who are setting up those support tickets with Microsoft. Let me know what your experiences have been with Microsoft support, good, bad, or indifferent. I've had mixed, as I've said, but uh, love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Give me a massive thumbs up if this video has helped you. Go check out the membership section of the channel if you've not joined. As I said, membership only videos available at a very low price now. You can check out our a vast back catalog and lots of members only videos coming soon. Do hit that subscribe button for me at the very least. If you would find that would help me so much and the notifications bell as you do so. Right, that's it for another video. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.